Hi, and welcome back to Cooking with Katie. I'm a registered dietitian with White Earth Public Health. Today I'm coming to you from my kitchen to prepare another fun, quick, and healthy meal while trying to be easy on your budgets. This week, we are gonna talk about kid-friendly meals, a topic we have again touched on, but there really are so many things to cover, so we're back at it again. When I put my recipes together for today, I try to find recipes that are typically kids' favorite meals that are healthy and have a fun twist on them when they're able. Making food fun for kids can sometimes entice them to try things they would most normally not try. Encouraging kids also to get into the kitchen and help you cook when they're old enough has many benefits and they are more likely to try the foods as well. So today, our goal is to include a whole grain item, a calcium rich food and a fruit or a vegetable because those are the foods that kids tend to fall short on most often. So to fulfill our goal today, we are going to make a jacked up homemade macaroni and cheese and some baked crispy carrot fries. So let's get started. So to start with today, we're gonna to begin on our crispy carrot fries. So in my bowl, I went ahead and washed and peeled some carrots and I just went ahead and cut them into like some fry size pieces just something that you can grab onto. Um, I did try to make them fairly um, about the same size so that they kind of will cook at the same time. Um, and just use as many carrots as you would need. The recipe itself does call for two whole carrots and I had some smaller carrots um, and so I actually used four. So this is this what I'm gonna make. All right, so to whip up our carrots, it's super easy. First, I'm just gonna go ahead and drizzle about one teaspoon of some olive oil on there. And then next, um, oh, crazy. Next, we're just gonna go ahead and add our seasoning. And in our seasoning, I have two teaspoons of breadcrumbs and a little bit of seasoning inside of my breadcrumbs that I added, uh, some salt and pepper, a dash of dried basil, and a little bit of garlic powder. Um, this is just what I used from the recipe. The recipe did also say you could use things like, um, you know, spicy foods, uh, like spicy foods, chili powder, excuse me, or some hot sauce, throw some hot sauce in with your oil, um, you know, a Cajun seasoning, a ranch seasoning, whichever. Um, there are some more seasoning ideas in my recipe booklet, so check those out. So we're just gonna go ahead and stir these around until everything's really nicely coated, and then we will get them all set up into our pan. Okay, so here are our carrots, nicely coated. I'm just gonna toss them onto my pan. I went ahead and just lined it with a little par parchment paper, but you can also just spray your pan. I'm just going with this pan size because I think that's what I'm gonna need. Um, I'm just gonna toss my carrots right in and then I'm gonna spread them out. I don't really want them overlapping so they can get they can cook nicely. It'll help um, everything crisp up a little bit too. Um, so as I'm kind of spreading these out here, let's talk a little bit about these amazing carrots that we're working with this week. Um, carrots are gonna be our superfood for this week. So carrots are packed with vitamins and minerals and antioxidants, like most all of our superfoods are. And they're, they're awesome because they're low in calorie and they are also high in fiber and low in carbohydrates. For our bodies, they are good for our eyes, our heart, our immune systems, as well as our GI health, they can help lower our risk for cancer. So when we're looking for a, you know, a fun, crunchy snack, or even like today, like a wonderful, easy side dish, really look no further than our simple everyday carrots. Sometimes you just gotta spice them up a little bit and make them you know, a little bit out of the ordinary. So now, here our carrots are, they're all kind of in one single layer, and they are ready to hit the oven. So I'm gonna stick them in a preheated 400 degree oven. They'll cook for about 14 to 18 minutes. I'm probably gonna set my timer for about 15 minutes and I'll poke them and see if they're um, soft enough. And you might want them a little bit crunchy yet. Just, just cook them to your desire. But the last bit is to go ahead and turn your broiler on at the end if you wish to um, crisp them up a little bit. So I am gonna go with that. So, all right, ready to go into the oven. All right, so now we are ready to start on our homemade mac and cheese. So um, the first step was I already went ahead and cooked up my eight ounces of whole grain pasta, which is like just a half a big box. Um, so now we're just gonna get started on our cheese sauce. So what I have going in here is I am just going ahead and melting my butter, which is just about there. And once it's all melted, um, I'm gonna stir in, kind of whisk in actually, probably I'll switch up my tools um, to my flour mixture. 
which in my flour mixture, I have two tablespoons, some little seasoning in there, two tablespoons of flour, and then a half a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder. I just had my burner on about medium. And I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle my flour in with my butter, and I'm gonna whisk like crazy. It's gonna get clumpy on me, but that's okay. It's supposed to do that, so don't freak out. And then um, once we get it all, see it's kind of clumping up there. Once we get this all together like it is just right now, like I showed you, I'm gonna go ahead and let this cook for a minute. It's important to let this this texture or this flour mixture cook for a minute because it gets rid of that that floury taste. Um, sometimes you do want to keep cooking because it will um, burn on you pretty fast. So I'm just gonna keep stirring this. Okay, so our flour is cooked up here for about a minute. You can really smell the garlic. So now I'm gonna slowly go ahead and add my one cup of milk. I'm just gonna kind of whisk it in the best that you can. I'm gonna turn my heat down a little bit. And add a little bit more. And this is, you really just wanna whisk, whisk, whisk until it gets as smooth as possible. I normally don't end up with a completely smooth sauce, but you know, it's okay. As long as it tastes good, that's all that matters. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of keep whisking away on this. This is what it's gonna look like. Just a white, kind of it's a thickening sauce. The, the flour thickens our cheese sauce. All right, and now, my next step is I'm gonna go ahead and add Greek yogurt. It's a fourth of a cup of Greek yogurt, yogurt, excuse me, and you can use the Greek yogurt or you can go ahead and go with your sour cream. I do always try to cook with um, Greek yogurt in place of sour cream when I can, just because it is a bit of a healthier substitute, so to say. Um, it's lower in calories. It has a little bit higher protein. It's got some good bacteria for our guts in it. I'm gonna have to grab a spatula here. Um, and it contains no of those, none of those saturated fats. So it is definitely a good um, substitute where you can. I'm gonna whisk this together until it's nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna let it cook for about three to five minutes. I'll stir it on and off. I'm probably gonna keep it on this pretty, I have like it set on a three for mine and I only go up to a, a seven and a nine. Um, let this cook for that three to five minutes. Like I said, just keep an eye on it. You probably don't have to stir constantly, but keep an eye on it because we don't want it to come to a boil. So that's why you don't really want it on too high of a heat. So there we are. Hey, so it's been about two and a half, three minutes here. Um, I did pretty much actually stand here and stir this almost the whole time, just because I was a little bit nervous about it sticking on the bottom. So I turned my burner down to low now. Um, so here's what we got going on here. Just a nice little cream sauce. Maybe a little closer look. There we go. Um, and then we are gonna go ahead and stir in two cups of cheese. Now, I just went with two cups of cheddar cheese, but um, go ahead and use any, you know, combinations of cheese that you would like. You don't have to just stick with one, or if you have other favorite macaroni and cheese recipe, you know, follow that along. And you can even follow that recipe um, with today's, you know, and kind of take on the jacked up version that I've included. So I'm just gonna continue stirring this together until my cheese all comes together, which you can see it's happening pretty quickly. It doesn't take much for that cheese to melt in there. Um, and then we'll come and finish. Our mac and cheese is actually almost gonna be ready to be done. All right, just a live look in on our carrots here. They've got about five minutes left to go in their regular cooking time. So there they look. They look delicious and they smell delicious too. So our cheese sauce is done. The thing I did forget to mention before was before you start adding our pasta and our extra add-ins, um, do make sure you just taste it. And if you would like to add in like a little bit more salt or pepper or some more garlic, I did go ahead and throw in a little bit more garlic. So here we are, ready to go. So first thing we're gonna go with our, we have our eight ounces of whole grain pasta. Um, any shape goes, I had some of the spiral noodles. So that's just what I am gonna toss in. think about that but I think we should be good I do still just have it on like really low heat I might even just turn it off because in the end I will shut it off and cover it just so that it all can heat up and come together with our flavors all right so I'm just gonna stir 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 my mac and cheese together 
And then we can't forget, we're gonna do a little, our jacked up version, we're, so we're calling it. And as you probably would guess, for me, that means, um, of course, some added nutrition. So today, what I am gonna toss, and I'm gonna coat my noodles a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna stir in some steamed broccoli that I had, that was my choice of added nutrition today. Um, but definitely any vegetable works well, you know, carrots, cauliflower, peas, you know, zucchini, the list goes on, just whatever sounds good to you. Now with, I started with fresh, so I did go ahead and steam it because really at this point, um, we're just probably going to heat it. At, so there's not the time for cooking with this dish. Frozen as well, you probably don't need to heat them up, but if you just want to run them over some hot water to get that cold out of it or even just heat them up a little bit in the microwave. Um, you know, you can certainly do a combination of vegetables. Um, whatever just works for you. There's no wrong way about this. So be creative and make it taste delicious. All right, so what I'm really gonna do at this point is just cover this up, let it heat. I'll probably actually turn it off and it will be ready to go. Our carrots have a few more minutes yet and then we'll be able to put it all together. So there it is. Okay, folks, so we are ready to plate up here. I just pulled our carrots out of the oven. I did end up cooking them, the full cooking time, about that 18 minutes. And then I went ahead and put the broiler on for another additional two minutes. Everything looks and smells delicious. So let's just dive in here. So I'm gonna start with my mac and cheese here. I did go ahead and pick a little smaller plate because this, in my mind, is going for our, you know, our smaller kids, our bellies are a little bit smaller, so don't overload them. Just gonna do a little bit of the mac and cheese. So there, got some beautiful color, the star and camera. There we go. And then I'm just gonna grab a few of these fun little crispy carrot fries. Um, something else, that, you know, some apples or some grapes would be delicious with this. And then with our carrot fries, I think it would be fun for a little bit of um, ranch. And I did go ahead and include a Greek yogurt ranch recipe for this week's. So there we go. Like I said, I think I probably would put a little bit of fruit on here, which like I said, anything of your choice as well. So for our goals, let's look at everything. Um, remember our first goal was for our whole granum and that would fall under our pasta. And then for calcium, we have our cheese and our broccoli right in that dish as well. And then of course for our vegetables, we have our broccoli and carrots. And also, like I said too, you see a good variety of color, so we know we're getting a variety of those nutrients. All right, so another great meal is in the books. So before we wrap up today, I just wanna leave you with a couple of thoughts. Uh, remember, as you meal plan today and in the future, always remember to include your family. Many a times they can come up with some awesome ideas. And don't be afraid to tweak their ideas just by, um, you know, checking your pantry first. And you know, if your kids are like, mom, let's have some macaroni and cheese, like we did today. What can you add to make it healthier, you know, to make it more well-rounded? Um, just, just super simple steps to make things a little bit better. Also, with them picking the meal, they tend to be a little bit more excited and willing to try the things as well. And also, just remember to try to make as many of those foods that you are making at home as homemade and healthy as possible. Like today, we created our own macaroni and cheese and took a twist on our fries and used carrots instead. And also, please, please, please don't get stumped on having to use some semi-homemade cooking, like with your classic box of macaroni and cheese, go ahead and spice it up just like we did today. You know, stirring in some fruits, or not fruits, excuse me, not so much, vegetables, things like that. And then you can also turn it into a one-pot wonder and stir in some protein, whether it be you know, chicken or tuna um, or beans, you know, easy way. Just add it all, make it wonderful. So with that, I really just want to thank you for watching. Hope that you've enjoyed. And remember to check out whiter.com for today's recipes along with other kid-friendly meals and cooking tips. Happy cooking and we'll see you next week, guys.